Okay, thanks again for joining us for today's webinar, Marketing to the Heartland. As I mentioned, my name is Allie and I head up the event and field marketing program here at Fluent. I'll be moderating today's session. I'm joined on the line with Jordan Cohen and Tanya Lavina from Fluent. Hi guys. Hi, thanks for joining. Jordan Cohen is a well-known industry veteran and, spe and frequent speaker, author, and media spokesman on a wide variety of digital marketing topics whose insights have been featured in the New York Times, USA Today, and the Wall Street Journal. As Chief Marketing Officer for Fluent, he oversees Fluent's corporate marketing strategy and execution. Tanya Lavina leads Fluent's consumer research program. Previously a research lead at Twitter and Scholastic, she's currently working on research reports focusing on consumer perceptions and behavior. With that, I'll go ahead and pass it over to Jordan to kick us off. Um, thanks so much for joining everybody and happy Flag Day. Um, just, a, just a coincidence when we scheduled this webinar that happens to be uh, my favorite holiday, um, as I'm sure it is for, for all of you guys as well. Um, but no, thanks for joining. Uh, Marketing to the Heartland is, uh, this webinar today is the culmination of um, an intensive three-part series of research that we've been producing over the course of Q1 and Q2 of this year. Um, and why do we do it? Um, it really starts with, to be honest with you guys, the election. Um, uh, November 2016, Donald Trump became president. Um, we did a lot of research in the space. We worked with a lot of campaigns on both sides of the aisle for uh, over a year and a half. Um, our research got it wrong, um, but more importantly, the entire press corps got it wrong. Um, the candidates themselves, I think that even uh, in the in the hours up to the, the election itself, you saw the, the Trump campaign starting to posture and talk about how they were going to protest the results and, and, and all of that. Um, but uh, it wasn't just the political space that was kind of shell-shocked. Um, the entire world of marketing and communications kind of took a step back and asked, you know, we got it wrong on, on the political side. Are we misreading middle America? Are we misreading an entire huge swath of the country that is the heartland? Um, and it's not just about political communications, but are our brand marketing communications missing the mark? Um, about two weeks after the election, this was one of the top headlines on the Wall Street Journal. Um, the election is what got um, advertisers rethinking middle America um, or marketing to middle America. And I just wanted to, to share a quote um, from that piece. Um, Advertisers are grappling with the stark realization after spending years courting U.S. consumers with aspirational images of upscale urban living, they may have misjudged the yearnings of much of their audience. Um, in the wake of Trump's election, with a wave of support from middle American voters, advertisers are reflecting on whether they are out of touch with the same people, rural, economically frustrated, elite distrusting, anti-globalization voters, the people who propel the businessman into the White House. Mr. Trump's rise has them rethink the way they collect data about consumers, recruit staff, um, and ultimately pitch products. Um, so with that in mind, um, we wanted to, to utilize our position um, as the, the leading people-based performance marketing platform in the country um, to, to do research and, and really better understand these consumers. Um, just a bit about us. Um, Fluent is a company and a marketing platform that marketers use to connect with real people, not pixels. Um, we have nearly a million conversations every single day with Americans, many of them who reside in the heartland. Um, and marketers come to us when they're looking to drive actions from their marketing campaigns, um, whether that's signing up for an email list or a loyalty program, downloading a mobile app, contributing to a, a political campaign, or filling out a form. Um, we only get paid and our clients only pay us when a consumer actually takes some kind of action or response to the ads that we're serving. Um, and we know this country better than, than anybody. Um, I'm the CMO, so I'll say stuff like that, but, but I truly believe it. We are very differentiated. Um, a million consumers register with Fluent owned and operated media properties every single day, 30 million on a monthly basis. Um, we survey them. We don't have to guess what they're thinking. We don't have to infer what they're interested in based on different web pages that they visit or products that they buy. We straight up go to them and ask them, what are they interested in today? What are they planning on doing today? I um, mean, use that to fuel our client interactions. Um, and we drive 65 million plus actions every single month. 
Um, we're interacting with real people. We're getting insights that are fresh, recent as possible, um, and derived straight from the source. Um, and certainly, one of our strong suits has always been connecting with that fabled Walmart shopper, um, the middle American. Um, we, we know this audience better than anybody um, and, and live and breathe it every day. Um, so with that set up, I want to turn it over to uh, our Director of Consumer Research, Tanya Lavina, who's going to take you guys over the next half hour through some of the most interesting findings uh, from our three-part series on marketing to the heartland. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. So in order to help marketers better understand the heartland demographic, we conducted three separate national surveys of over 1,500 Americans each with the purpose of identifying marketing strategies that will best resonate with this often overlooked and misunderstood audience. In addition to looking at this data uh, by Heartland versus coastal consumers, we also looked at differences uh, between consumers who live in urban, suburban, and rural areas. So what we found was uh, that when making purchasing decisions, Americans who live in the Heartland are actually more likely to say that they will shop with brands that share or exemplify their core values. However, nearly half of Heartland Americans said that they rarely or never see ads that appeal to their core values. This signals a direct need for marketers to redefine their messaging strategies when looking to connect with this often misunderstood audience. So what are the core values of Heartland Americans? Well, in some cases, not very different from values of coastal Americans. Residents in the Heartland value family, being self-sufficient, faith, work-life balance, and traditional marriage. Well, while some of these values, such as family, being self-sufficient, and faith, they're important to all Americans, it is those who live in the Heartland that care most about brands aligning with these values. And when we say align with values, it does not necessarily mean that every campaign must show a traditional marriage ceremony. No. Even if a campaign is not explicitly tied to a value, it's important to consider the audience to make sure that the messaging does not offend or alienate them in any way, shape, or form. What we see is that Heartland Americans, they're 10% more likely to believe that it's important for a brand to share their values when deciding on a purchase. Also, 15% of consumers in the Heartland said that they've actually stopped purchasing from a brand because they saw an offensive ad. And another 10% said they have cut off a brand because they felt like it did not understand them. So what kind of ads do consumers actually want to see? Well, we asked them. And across the United States, we found that consumers want ads to be informational. As much as we see brands touting socially responsible messaging, for example, many of the Super Bowl ads this year, if you've seen any of them, few consumers actually prefer those types of ads. Brands would do better by focusing and providing value to consumers, whether it's in the form of showcasing products or services, providing useful tips and tricks, or info on how they can save. Again, this is true for both heartland and coastal consumers. Price consciousness, however, is generally more pronounced in the heartland, and this is especially true for rural areas. Uh, for example, as you can see in this chart, uh, urban and suburban dwellers care more about branded products. They're willing to pay for a brand name. You can see in the light blue, a larger percentage of urban consumers say that brand is always more important compared to price. On the other hand, rural consumers, they're more price conscious. They are more, they're the most group that's most likely to say that price is always more important. This creates an opportunity for brands to uh, change messaging, focus on low price or saving money when speaking specifically to rural consumers in the heartland. All American consumers agree that the quality of a product is the most important criteria when deciding on a purchase. Additionally, as the conversation about the cost of globalization and outsourcing continues in the U.S., it's become increasingly important for brands to support local production. So the, uh, the top line recommendations are highlight the high quality of products and messaging and emphasize products made in the USA. Of course, affordability is important as well as brands sharing consumer core values, especially for those who live in the heartland. So now that we know what consumers in the heartland care about, how do we actually reach them? Well, our study shows that Americans living in the heartland are more community-oriented. They value opinions of those around them. 
They are far more likely to say they learn about new brands and products via family, friends, social media, as well as colleague recommendations. Word of mouth is paramount, which is why it's very important for brands to focus on consistently delivering on their promises and maintaining quality customer service. Also, since heartland consumers are more community oriented, it also makes sense that they're more active on social media. Specifically, we find that Heartland residents are more likely to use Facebook and Snapchat. So in order to effectively market to this audience, uh, one might, a brand might consider developing an organic following on social media, also investing in paid social campaigns, especially on Facebook and Snapchat, since this is where Heartland consumers are more likely to be found. We also recommend brands to consider investing in customer service, especially through social. We find that consumers in the heartland are 67% more likely to follow brands on social, specifically for customer service. And as we have previously mentioned, the word of mouth recommendations of those who had great experiences with brands are highly valued. Now that we know how to reach consumers, let's look at some notable differences between Heartland and Coastal Americans in terms of devices they own and general media consumption habits. Specifically, smartphone preferences vary across regions. We see that consumers who live in the Heartland, they're more likely to own an Android device, and Coastal residents share a fondness for the iPhone. This could, of course, be due to the fact that Coastal consumers generally have higher incomes. Smartphones generally are the primary device for online access for all U.S. consumers. However, rural Americans, uh, they're least likely to access Internet by devices aside from smartphones. So desktops, laptops, tablets, nearly a quarter of rural Americans only use smartphones to access the Internet. Consumers in the heartland are also more likely to use their phones for gaming and entertainment. Since they tend to prioritize social interactions, it makes sense that um, and they use a social networks such as Facebook and Snapchat more often. It's not surprising that they're more likely to use their smartphones for social media um, more often than coastal residents. Heartland consumers are also more likely to pay, play uh, games on their smartphones, and they're also more likely to say that smartphones are their favorite device for playing games. In addition to device ownership and usage, we uncovered some interesting differences in purchasing behaviors as well. In the age of widespread smartphone usage and shopping on handhelds, it's imperative for brands to optimize their customer journeys for mobile. Overall, we found that 6 in 10 Americans say that they made an online purchase in the past six months, and more than 4 in 10 made a purchase on their smartphone in the same time frame. However, we do see that consumers who live in the heartland, they have been slower to adopt mobile commerce. And this trend is driven also by the rural, uh, by rural residents as well. We see that online shopping is more prevalent in coastal areas. And even though online shopping has become ubiquitous, physical stores are still the preferred way of shopping for nearly half of U.S. consumers. This is true of both Heartland and Coastal areas. As we've seen in the previous slide, a lot of consumers are purchasing online, yet only 20% say that they prefer online to physical store. So this really signals an opportunity for retailers to improve their online shopping experience to make it more seamless. Consumers generally say that they prefer shopping in physical store because they like to see the items in person, they like to try them on, Consumers in the heartland also find brick and mortar shopping more convenient, and convenience is a very important factor for them. There are also some differences in how consumers pay for purchases in those stores. Um, cash and credit cards are the most widely used payment methods across all regions, and digital wallets are slowly gaining share. We do see, though, that heartland consumers are more likely to pay by check, and this is also driven by heartland uh, rural residents. In the next section, we're going to look at advertising receptivity across different media channels. While there are some differences between Heartland and coastal consumers in this regard, we actually noticed more profound trends depending on whether consumers live in an urban, suburban, or rural setting. 
It's very important for brands to consider different media tactics uh, depending on where their consumers live. For example, our data indicates that Heartland consumers are more receptive to email marketing newsletters. They're 27% more likely to say they remembered making a purchase after seeing a promotion in the newsletter. It's imperative for brands to invest in this proven marketing channel, especially when marketing to consumers living in Heartland. We also saw that purchasing behaviors differ depending where the consumers live. For example, urban and suburban residents tend to do more research online before making a purchase than those who live in rural areas. While rural residents are more likely to use a check in a store, suburban consumers use credit and debit cards more. Now, suburban residents have the highest average income, so they might very well have an easier time getting credit cards approved. Rural residents value convenience and cheaper prices, while urban dwellers are more likely to care about better selection of products. Urban residents are also most likely to self-identify as spenders rather than savers, and rural residents are most likely to disagree with such a statement. Even though some might assume that suburban and rural Americans would be more likely to view shopping as a social activity, it is actually urban consumers who are most likely to shop as a social activity with family and friends. This was a, a bit of a surprising finding in our study. Um, we think it can be due to several factors. One, urban centers have a wider variety of shopping venues, and more urban residents self-identify as spenders. Population composition is also a factor. We see that retirees are least likely to shop as a social activity, and urban areas generally have fewer retirees. We also see that urban residents are twice as likely to perceive celebrity endorsements having an effect on their purchasing decisions. One, one might think that Heartland residents are highly influenced by reality TV, celebrities. They're actually less likely to perceive this influence as having an effect of them, which was also a surprising finding in the study. When we look at advertising receptivity across media channels, certain trends emerge depending on where consumers live. So we see that suburban consumers are most likely to remember seeing ads on several platforms, especially TV, social media, radio, and mobile notifications. We also found them to be more connected generally. Um, suburban consumers tend to own different devices at a higher rate. While rural residents are least receptive to advertising, suburban consumers are most likely to sign up for mobile notifications from brands, and urban residents are more likely to say that they receive marketing newsletters from brands of products. Suburban and urban, urban consumers are most likely to make a purchase after seeing an ad on any media. Now, we previously uh, showed that Heartland consumers are more likely to make a purchase after seeing an email newsletter, and this trend is really driven by urban Heartland consumers. It is the rural Heartland consumers that are less likely to purchase products after seeing ads on any media channel. So thank you so much for joining. These are really the highlights from um, our three-part Marketing to the Heartland series. If you'd like to download the full reports, you can do so on our website at fluenco.com slash insights. Uh, we still have some time for some questions, so definitely feel free to type them in. Yeah, and it looks like we've had a few questions come in throughout the webinar, um, the first one being, Earlier you mentioned that all Americans thought that local production was very important, yet I would expect this to be more prevalent in the heartland where people were affected by outsourcing more. How do you guys explain this? So what we've seen is that um, there's been kind of like a national conversation about globalization and outsourcing. Um, since the election really put this issue front and center, there's been a lot of news coverage, and um, that really made it a more national conversation. And so, yes, while we would potentially, one might expect that areas that are most hit by outsourcing would be, would consider brands producing goods in the USA more important, we see it as um, the second most important factor for all Americans across the board. Yeah, and, and I'd add, I think that, you know, we were, we were testing theories, and that was one that we were definitely surprised about. Um, I think that the data was directionally kind of suggesting that, that Heartland residents were slightly more um, concerned with, with domestic production. But 
from a statistical pers uh, significance perspective, there, there really was no difference. And I think that one of the one of the biggest takeaways, uh, I think Tanya has highlighted uh, very clearly where there are market differences uh, in the two, but one of the biggest takeaways for, for us was that um, there's a lot of similarities between coastal and, and heartland consumers. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, the, the, the country is united on a lot of these issues. Um, and to Tanya's point, if, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think that um, you know, the, the bigger difference was um, how much heartland consumers care about a brand actually sharing their values. Exactly. Um, right, whereas uh, you know, coastal residents may feel a certain way but not care as much as, uh, in terms of the marketing that they're receiving from a brand, uh, the Heartland residents will actually take it much more to heart when it comes to actually buying your products or services. So Exactly. Even when we talked about the main values like the family being self-sufficient, those things come up on the very top for coastal residents as well. But it's really the Heartland residents that um, are significantly more likely to care about these items, but also significantly more likely to care whether a brand shares these core values. Great. Okay, let's see. Um, so why is the heartland tied to the state? Is it not a mindset? Uh, that's an excellent question. So for uh, the way we organized the study was actually going off of um, when I was first analyzing the data, I looked at the data in a number of different cuts. Uh, first looked at it through um, different states, but also then um, rural, urban, and suburban areas, uh, really to kind of try to tease out um, whether, what, you know, what um, makes for greater differences. Is it somebody who lives um, in a specific state in the country or somebody who lives in a rural area? And what we saw is actually very interesting. Uh, certain rural parts of coastal states where behave, uh, people were thinking very similar to uh, urban consumers from those states. And people who lived in urban areas in states uh, in the middle of the country would often uh, have similar ideas and values and t uh, tendencies um, as people who live in rural and suburban areas in those states. So um, we really looked for where the largest statistically significant differences lie. Um, also, the specific states that we selected as part of um, the Heartland was based off of um, a definition by the Heartland Group, which is also a research consultancy that does a lot of work trying to understand um, the Heartland. Um, so we were happy to see that our data reflected some of the findings and differences that they have seen in their research as well. Okay. Thanks, Tony and Jordan. Um, it looks like we're about out of time for today, um, but thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. And as we mentioned, we will be sending out the recording to the webinar here within the next 24 hours for you to review or share with your colleagues. Thank you so much for joining. If you have any additional questions, you know, feel free to email us, email us as well. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone.